Hey guys, it's Duconrad1 and welcome to episode 11 of Let's Build Chateau de Lumiere. So starting out today, I wanted to add on an extra batter to the outside of Lumiere. I thought that at the time, at, right now it just doesn't seem very, uh, it just seemed a little bit flat. So what I do is I add on just a little bit thicker of a base and I think that looks pretty pretty good and it makes it seem a little bit more solid toward the, towards the bottom and that's that's sort of the result that I was looking for. But today we're going to be working on the interior of the stable and I think uh, by the end of the episode you guys are going to really like what we came up with so just stay tuned and uh, hopefully you'll get some ideas from this. So starting now we're going to work on the actual stable section down here. This is where the horses are going to be. We're going to be working on the stalls and such. Starting out I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I kind of had a hard time figuring out exactly the design that I was going to go for. But uh, in the end, it goes turns out pretty good. Building diagonals in a stable, like a like a diagonal stable, is not very easy, especially a two by two. If it was three by three, if it was a three angle, a 15 degree angle, it'd be much easier. But um, anyways, we are able to fit six stalls into this stables uh, using the trap doors, as you could see there. And we sort of make it fancy. We add in the carved blocks and stuff like that. And another thing that I really thought would be a good idea is, is add in those hay troughs up there, up above the state, up above each stall, so that the horses can just reach their necks up and eat the uh, the hay. I think that's a really cool design, and I really like how that turns out. So that right there, we just worked on is the tack room. That's where like the um, things like the the saddle and different materials and like uh, blankets for the horses and maybe grain stuff like that would be in that tack room there's more details that you'll see later on in the video so now we're coming up to the hay loft this is where all the hay and also the sort of warehouse section is going to be there's going to be some crates up here and things and again i did not know what i wanted to do but uh it turns out but again when you're working on underneath the roofs you do not want any of that red showing through red or any of your roof color showing through is not good now if it's thatch there can be an exception for that thatch typically doesn't have you know you can see it from underneath the roof but if it's roof tiles you do not want to see that so as you can see there i add on a second story to this hayloft like it's the loft to the hayloft if that makes any sense uh, but this is that up there is where the stable hands are going to live and a little bit more storage. And then right here we add in lots of hay and then we round it off using half slabs and stairs, stair blocks and things like that. Like you don't want it to look static. You want it to look organic and you want it to fit. And so that's what we do there. So turning around here, we're going to start working on the stair, the stair that leads up to the loft of the hay loft. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm even, if this is actually a hay loft. This is uh, like a hay storage room, I guess, like more, more like. But right here, we're making a cross back stair. So like the stair will come up and go back and we're using the railings and such like that in order to make it a really um, fancy looking stair. And I really love these reforged blocks. Like some might say you kind of lose the Minecraftiness of it, but I really think that they work. And for Minecraft, it just it just really does work for um, what we have and what we need. So got some storage in here, and instead of using like fire, like open candles and such like that, when you're working around hay or something like that, you do not want any open flames. So in this case, I use lanterns. So keep that in mind. And then again, for the roof up here, we start adding in details and such. We add cross beams and supports and things like that. Um, and uh, that turns out pretty good. So up here, we're just gonna start working on this, uh, the stable hands room. This is where the stable hands are gonna live, right up here in this little like partition. We're gonna add some trap doors to sort of block it off from the rest of the loft. And then we add like a little fireplace right there. I thought that would be a good idea to keep it warm in here. And then we add firewood outside as well little place to eat, little place to sort of just mingle and uh, do their thing. Like maybe the the stable master and the stable boy live here. Maybe it's father and son. I don't know, something along those lines. And we add just little bits of detail in here because of course they would need the means to live properly. So we add in like cabinets and a chest and you know, appropriate storage spaces in order for them to, in order to seem like that they live there and uh, things like that. But yeah, coming out to here, we're just gonna be adding in lots of like crates and chests and storage things in general. And then that sort of finishes off this uh, portion of the video. So 
Um, but yeah, I hope you guys learned something. It's pretty much, you know, pretty straightforward. Stables, Hayloft, and then the loft above here, and um, using the blocks to, uh, you know, the best of your abilities and coming up with something awesome. So that's that. Alrighty guys, well there we go, this is the final version of the stables. As you can tell, last episode we did in the exterior, and for this episode we did the interior. Also, we added on this extra bit of batter on the outside. I really thought that it was necessary, adding on just a little bit more of a strengthened foundation. And so we just used solid, uh, that sandstone, and a little bit of that clay in there as well. And I really like how that turned out. I really am quite happy with the results. So, um, yeah, kudos for that. Uh, so, I'm going to try to point one other thing out before we go on the inside. Is something that I just added in recently is using these jungle railings. We use those as somewhat like rusty iron bars in front of the arrow slits. It adds a very subtle detail. Very, very subtle. It's hardly even noticeable at some angles. But... The idea is, is that it just adds in that little bit of detail and makes it um, just seem a little bit more defensible. So like say if someone skinny was trying to climb the wall and get in through one of these arrow slits, like there's an iron bar there or something. I don't know, just, just a little something I thought that would make Lumiere look more interesting. We also added a little bit of that on the inside as well. Um, one other thing that I didn't show you guys last episode is a little storm drain. So. Um, say if there's a lot of standing water in here, the rain's just kind of falling off the roofs and it's like going, trying to figure out where to go. Um, now this is kind of a weird spot for it because it would probably go down through here and then out this way. So we'll probably have to add some storm drains out here, but we'll figure that out at some other time and most likely that'll be in another episode. So stay tuned for that. Um, so on our way in the inside, this is the stables. This is where the horses will be. There are six stalls for the horses. These up here are feeding troughs. This is where the stable hands would put hay in order to feed the horses. So then the horses would just kind of like reach their heads up and eat through those bars and such. And then we have these little iron bars overlooking those, uh, the vents or windows looking out that way. Back here, we have a little tack room, some apples, of course, for the horses. Where horses love apples, at least that's the stereotype. Um, and then we have some saddles in here for the horses. And a lovely rat, just to keep the horses company. Or maybe the horses are keeping the rats company, because there's another one back here, too. Anyways, a couple more saddles, stuff like that. But that's pretty much the detail in here. Making a diagonal stables is very difficult, because you gotta sort of, like... Uh, you got to work it in correctly, and it's very difficult to work it in in a very uh, smooth manner. So you notice that some have two two by troughs, and then like this one only has a one by trough. It's because just how the angle worked and the space and stuff that we had to work with. So um, as you can see, the ceiling has the wood beams going across with the trap doors for the ceilings, and then those wooden support things, whatever those are called, wooden support blocks uh, in between and such like that and uh, I think that works out pretty well but anyways that is the lower part of the stables and then this is where a like a wheelbarrow of dung and I was thinking maybe making a thing over here like a chute where the dung would be um, thrown off the side because they'd probably just take the wheelbarrow of dung bring it up this way and then just toss it over the side of the wall so we'll do that later so this leads up the side, up to the balcony. This is going to be, this is the way that leads into the actual hayloft itself. So this is all the hay for the horses down below. And you got some storage up here as well. So this is the sort of warehouse portion of the uh, of the place. You got just like several things. You wanna try to use trap doors and half slabs and stair blocks and things like that in order to make it seem a little bit more rounded and such so like they would just take clumps of hay and throw it down to the horses um i like this stair right here originally i was just thinking about making a ladder up to where the stable stable hands live which is over here um but we i just ended up making a cross back stair i'm not even sure what the official term for this is but you know it's like a scissor stair cross back half helix i don't know something like that and then right here we have the loft up above the hay loft. 
Uh, this is, again, some more storage and things. I added an owl up here. I thought that was a pretty good idea. And instead of making that one of these white windows, like over here, I decided to um, make it something more of a chute so that the owl could come in. So maybe this is a broken window, and then the owl decided to use this area for nesting. And then, as you can see, you come along here. It's just some random details. A little pulley system to bring supplies up from below up to here. And it comes out to here, which is where the stable hands live. Two little beds in here, a little stove, and details like that. And like a little workshop for one of the stable hands. Like maybe he want, he's a wannabe carpenter. Maybe he is a carpenter. Like maybe his uh, side job is to be a, uh, a carpenter. So that is that. And then this is the access way out to this section, the uh, top balcony of the back side, as you can tell right there. And then it's not detailed up there yet, so we're going to have to finish that up at some point. And then coming down here is the access way to the second balcony, which is right there. So that is about that. I don't think there's really anything else to say. There's... Uh, Quite a few things that we added in this video. I'm really happy with the result, and I hope you guys are as well. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, comment below, give me ideas for future episodes, and also subscribe for more content. And then also, don't forget to um, go over to my Facebook and Twitter, where you can follow me and check me out there, and uh, keep up with the goings-on of Dukon Red 1. Also, I have a Twitch where I live stream and build things like this, and a Patreon where you can support me monetarily. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you're from. Until the next one. Bye-bye.